Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with two humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And John, I, I feel like we're on our way at this point. I feel like the ship has yes. left the dock and we're, yeah. the journey has begun. We can basically hook up AI from this point on and have it <laughs> handle the show. Yeah. I mean, what, maybe, maybe uh, actually, that might be a little too, too quick to jump into that. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe uh, a ship isn't the best metaphor for, <laughs> for what we're doing. Maybe we're more like an old school bus, like an old school bus that you see just... We're, uh, we're Buckminster's Fu- Buckminster Fuller's <laughs> three-wheeled car that crashed at the World Fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the title of today's episode is It's Not You, It's Me, The Complicated Relationship Between Rats and and humans. Oh, this is so (laughs) perfect. This is so perfect because today, today I was uh, part of my duties in the morning is to go out and pick up the dog poop in the backyard. I do that every day so that, yeah. And I saw something, I thought it was a piece of poop, but it turned out to be a rat's head severed from its body. Oh, Just, just a rat's head in my backyard. And I was like, I was oh my stunned. God. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I assume my dog had gotten to it. Ooh, oh, it was just God. horrid, horrid. Wow. So, do you, do you think it was the dog, or do you think it was like uh, uh, like a, a falcon or something? Do you have yeah, any? we have a lot of wildlife here, so it could be a red-tailed hawk. There's a lot of those out here, so it could yeah. be you know it could be anything. I don't know, but it was just the head, no body in sight. Oh God! I was oh, I was God. just reading. I think today, this morning, or yesterday, that a an owl escaped from the Central Park Zoo in yes New York, yeah. and, and they were worried were that it. yeah they they were worried that he wouldn't be able to survive, and they said he's been living on rats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Chicago didn't Chicago at one point buy a bunch of falcons to live in the downtown to I think so. Cut yeah. back on the rat problems. Apparently, you can still see a falcon every now and then up on a sky high, you know, skyscraper oh. at, from time. So, what'd to you time. do? Did you go get like a, a tissue or something? To... Mm, I, no way. I, I just <laughs> used the pooper scooper and just put it in with the poop and get, oh, I just, oh, I can't. God. Oh, God. Yeah. Ooh. So, That's... anyway, I thought that was a, a good sign for today's Yeah, it's episode. an omen. It's an mm-hmm. omen that we need to, we need to discuss this. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> so yes, we do. What, what really started me thinking about this topic was I recently read uh, an article in the in the news where New York City had put out a, an advertisement for a a rat czar. They were trying to hire <laughs> a rat czar to take care of the rat problem. Yeah, and yeah. for those interested, it pays up to one hundred seventy thousand dollars a year. I do it. I'd yeah. do it. Rat czar? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Now, and- nowadays everybody works two full time jobs, so I'll just take it, I'll just take that job on too. Yeah, I was over- gonna say uh, 170,000 probably doesn't get you much even in New York. No, God, no. In New York, you'd be living on Staten Island, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I also <laughs> find it funny that uh it the czar thing is still being used. Like anytime they hire uh, <laughs> I know. A municipal or government employee to take care of a problem. Remember, like we had the drugs are. Yeah, I know. What is that? There's suddenly we we tap into this Russian. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. What is that royalty? I I don't know. And considering how what happened to the reels are, I'm not yeah. sure if that's Mm-mm. like the uh, the expectation Mm-mm. you want to set up. You know, yeah. set up for H- people. Him and but... his family, except for the daughter <laughs> who got away. I know. I know. Another I saw episode. The Disney film. Yeah. Um, but anyway, apparently Mayor Eric Adams of New York City hates rats. Mm-hmm. And I have to agree with I don't live in New York City. I've never voted for Eric Adams. I'm not endorsing Eric Adams. I don't know Eric Adams at all. But I will say that I agree with him that I hate rats. Yeah. I, almost everybody does. I think it's just can certain people can stomach it enough. Like I'm the guy who, when when there have been rats, I've had to trap them and 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 
you know, dispose of them. Ooh. My wife can't even like this conversation. She'd be screaming just at this conversation. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember before we moved from uh, L.A. back in like 2008. Remember, there was that rat house in Pacific mm. Palisades. Do you remember that? No. It was no. a big story then that this young couple had bought a house in Pacific Palisades. Fancy and, area. Yeah, mm -hmm. very expensive house and beautiful, like, you know, lots of palm trees yeah, near the beach. And I know where this is going. <laughs> they're looking outside and they see rats out in their driveway in between their house and the house next door. Oh. And they started to investigate and there was a... a Two elderly sisters who had been feeding rats. Oh in my their god! Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! What was that Michael Jackson movie with the rat? Uh, oh yeah, Ben, and then you ben. had Willard rats and everything. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ! It, it was an awful story, and it went on because this young couple tried to get, you know, the city to get involved, and the city was like, "Well, you know, we have to give them." notice and and it's like they were buying dog food and feeding the rats God. <laughs> so, oh yeah so jesus not oh. everybody hates rats i guess oh. but um oh. but eric adams i guess in 2019 he was the borough president of brooklyn and he held a press conference where he called all the press out and he showed them a 400 dollar uh bucket trap to kill rats and he was saying, you know, if this works, uh, I'm going to take this fight to City Hall, which is what he did. <laughs> he kind of rode the rat issue. You know, you find your issue. That's a good and, issue. That's like potholes yeah. for every other city. You know, <laughs> New York. I mean, Jesus. The I, was just in, I was just in New York City and we were in the subway waiting to get on the subway. And I did not see a rat scurrying down the subway tracks. Really? Which you almost always do. Yeah. So yeah. maybe maybe he's maybe it's working. I saw you can go online and there people do videos of oh boy like looking through a store that's closed and you'll see rats running around inside the store oh, or restaurant. God. And there was one just recently as I was reading up for this episode of like people on a guy sleeping on the subway and there's a rat running around his oh head. Oh my god. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. That's wrong. And somebody's filling and I'm like but, Please be a good human and go over there and wake the guy up and yeah. say there's a rat. Don't film it. You know what I yeah. mean? So or like film it for God. a little bit, but then go over there and wake him up. I mean, yeah. it was horrible, horrible. To oh, watch. oh my God. Um, so <sighs> another thing is that during COVID, uh, apparently uh, there were a lot more rat sightings in New York mm -hmm. because they, when the restaurants closed, the rats didn't have food and the rats were just kind of out getting a little hungry and they were out in the in the alleys and becoming more visible uh because with rats uh, i think that was true about... here in here in la too really really yeah yeah i think there were more rats yeah because with rats it's all about food and sex that's why mm. that drives, that drives all the, right. the rat <laughs> finally i can agree on something with the rats <laughs> yeah it's uh in his book rats uh, Robert Ugh. Sullivan says that rats will have sex up to 20 times a day what? and a male, yeah. And a male rat will have sex with as many female rats as possible. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know some rats. rats. I went to, I went to college <laughs> with some rats who did that. Yeah. He says, uh, if you are living in a city, which mm -hmm. you are. Yes, I am. And I am as well. Yeah. Then you are most likely in close proximity of two rats having sex. <laughs> at, at any uh, time. I, well, one of them got it, fucked his head off. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have to put some wildlife cameras out there in the backyard to see. To he see had what's sex going and on. so much sex, his head popped <laughs> off. Apparently. What a oh, way to go. What a way to go. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, the uh, the other thing is a single pair of rats, just two rats, can mm -hmm. produce up to 15,000 offspring No in a year. way. Yeah. That yeah. is just ridiculous. And, and then you imagine once those 15,000 come out, you know, this is, mm. they don't care who they're doing it with. So right. it's like. Brother, sister, uncle, right. cousin, mom. 
China. Everybody's, yeah, yeah. everybody's, it's just Caligula times right. 10. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make it very, very ancient history. Like, I'm you trying. The classics. The classics. <laughs> put it to something we could all like identify with. Um, so again, I have to say in complete admission here, I hate rats. Yeah. Rats give me the willies. They it's get okay. heebie jeebies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just can't right. stand them. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more I read about them, I, I couldn't stop. I couldn't oh, stop. Fascinating. <laughs> well, they're so yeah. smart. Yeah. They're so smart. You ever read the uh, Rats of Nim? Oh, yeah. This is Frisbee. I love that one. Yeah. That's a good I book. This is for- I tr- yeah. I love that book too. Try to get my kids to read it. No, no interest. They were like, this is really? stupid, dad. Yeah. They didn't I think like it was it. a simpler time or something. <laughs> we, what we, was it? The mouse and the motorcycle. Did you ever read that one too? Oh, my daughter loved that one. So that did she? One I got. Yeah, she did. That one she loved. I never could understand how the motorcycle actually ran. Yeah. You, gotta, that, really you, yeah. <laughs> you just got to give him that one. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought that up because now I'm going to have to go in and research it. I may have to read uh, it again. Just, it used to bother me. Like, how is it? How is he slipping along? You, just you as a little boy. <laughs> He's pondering it. Can't can't suspend my disbelief. You no. Know? Uh, are there any animals that give you the heebie-jeebies? I, I worked in a lot of restaurants, for example. A lot of restaurants. And I... I, I uh, cockroaches is probably the one that bugs me the most. Really? I just don't like them. Mm-mm. Yeah. I don't like myself a cockroach. I, just, I just one or is it when they're a bunch of yeah, them together? Uh, well, in any number at all. I just, they're just, I know they're important. I know they eat a lot of dead skin. I know they're like the <laughs> vacuum cleaners of humanity. They eat all of our dead skin. Really? If, if it weren't for cockroaches, apparently we'd have a lot more dust in our houses. Because really? dust is all our skin that's flaking off, or most of it is. Yeah. So uh, they do a, they do important work. I know that, but I just I can't stand those antennas and the oh, yeah. God, oh. I just don't oh. like them. Mm-mm. Oh, how about you guys? Did you ever see that? Uh, what was it? It was a mountain lion. Because if you live in the neighborhood where you yeah. used to be, right? P-22, he just passed away. Never saw him. Just saw pictures of him. But no, he was uh, like he was. He was widely loved. Really? Uh, everyone loved P-22. Yeah, we couldn't yeah. believe that there was a mountain lion living in L.A. My friend who just moved here goes, what's wrong with L.A.? Everybody, like, loves this mountain lion who would kill him if it, it was. <laughs> I was like, that's L.A., baby. That's L.A. Yeah. That's L.A. Yeah. Because he would come down out of the park, right, and go into yeah. the neighborhood and everything. As he got older, he started to come down more because he couldn't hunt, you know, coyotes yeah. and deer. So he'd, that's that's when things kind of started going south. In fact, his last two meals were two chihuahuas that he <laughs> ate. <laughs> that was like, that's it. And then he died. They put, had to put him down because he was so... Oh. Uh, he, he was he not, was accustomed he, he to lived Chihuahua. very long long time and i'm i love dogs but i gotta say with p22 i was like you know what give him a couple of chihuahuas the guy's yeah. been living <laughs> by himself in griffith park for 14 when we years. were uh living up in santa fe one time the dogs were kind of going crazy i was in the house and i'm like looking out the window trying to figure out what the dogs are going crazy about and i realize as you know as your eyes kind of get adjusted to what's outside or whatever there was a bobcat in the tree outside our house looking in at us, like Ooh. in our living room of like, all right, you guys. Yeah, I see and, you. Go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> it's like, and I, I remember just the thought of like, oh, my God, it's looking at us. And then, oh, my God, the doggy door is open. I'm like being attacked. Like watching a football game or something in your living room and suddenly mm. like a bobcat jumping on you in the couch. Oh, Jesus. Horrified me. Oh, um, nasty. So again, thinking of kind of setting up what we're looking at today. So dogs were domesticated about 30,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. And cats were domesticated 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. Clearly. It, 
Yeah, they still <laughs> haven't caught on and <laughs> like what the rules of the game are. Yeah, they don't get it. <laughs> dogs have had a 10,000 year, had yeah. 18,000 year head start, you know. Dogs have thrown in the towel. They're like, all right. <laughs> but cats are still like, you know what? I can still hunt. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I'm like, rats have been there right along with us. You know yeah. what I mean? For for like tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of years, really? rats have been there with us too. I mean, it's not the same relationship. It was only in the 1800s that we started to domesticate rats. Mm. But but I'm like, they've we've had a shared history with rats. So my question is, why are we still so uncomfortable with them? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, it is true. Why are they vermin? Uh, well, you know, they, they scurry around they they hide, they, they're, they, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then of course the bubonic plague, Yeah, you know, now, so now they're associated with, you know, any kind of disease. And, right. I mean, they killed a lot of us. There are the fleas yeah. on them killed a lot of us, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's like, I don't know, do we still like squirrels? I remember you had a squirrel problem mm-hmm. at your house that was eating your apricots or something. Yes, he was. And I, yeah, he won. He won. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, you're right. Squirrels we think are cute. But they're yeah. out in the, in the light of day. We see them jumping and they don't bother us. They don't come in our house. That's it. Right. Rats right. come in our house and that's wrong. Yeah. And they so must that, be eradicated what, because of that. Yeah, I we'll have to consider that later on when we kind of talk mm-hmm. about like what it is about rats. But I like mm-hmm. that. That's a good point. I think that they're mm-hmm. in our space. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just get a little background on rats uh, historically. Uh, in the United States and Europe, we're we're dealing with like two types of rats. We have the black rat. Oh boy, uh, which is Rattus rattus. Oh and, God. Uh, <laughs> and DNA research, this just came out too. DNA research from the Max Planck Institute, who we've discussed before with, yes. when we talk about Neanderthals, mm-hmm. um, showed two migrations of black rats into Europe. One was during the Roman period. And then after the Crusades, there was another migration of black rats that came back with the ships and everything from the oh, God. And and it's interesting because those two migrations weren't related genetically to each other. In other words, it wasn't one family that had come and stayed with the Romans. There was like an entirely new uh, migration of the black yeah. rats, which is also gene called pool. like the, yeah, a total yeah. fresh gene pool to, <laughs> yeah. to make sure that they were going to stay get a stronghold in Europe. Right. And that's the one that uh, we usually talk about when we talk about the black rat. That's the one that's associated with the plague. Mm -hmm. It was the fleas on the black rat uh, carried the plague. And then when the black rat would go into like cities or villages and then the rat would die. And then, of course, the fleas had to go somewhere. So they would go on to humans. And then after that, the plague kind of morphed and was able to be transferred from person to person. Yeah. (sighs) God. But the, the black rat is also known as the ship rat <clears throat> hmm. or the roof rat. Yes, and black climbers. They call them black climbers sometimes, oh, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. I had a, a guy, an exterminator at my house who once said, it might be black climbers. And I was like, oh. Jesus, don't say that. <laughs> oh, God, that's awful. Don't say that. Black that's climber. Awful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, in Europe and also over here in the States, the, uh, the black rat was eventually pushed out by the brown rat or the hmm. ratus norvegicus, the Norway rat. Um, Norwegians. And the black rat, yeah. Damn. Yeah. I'm going to Norway in about a month. Are you I'll really? See, uh, yeah. I'll blame them for our keep, rat problem. Keep an eye out for it. Apparently uh. though, uh, Historically, people always blame the rats on like other people. Like I think the um, in Ireland they called it the the French <laughs> the French French rat. You know, it's that's one of those fair. Things. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody loves to blame the French, and they kind of they ask for it. They really ask for it. 
it's kind of uh, one of those things that you do with venereal disease. <laughs> you know, it's always somebody else. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You know, the English kiss or something, you know what I mean? It's always something else. Uh, but now the black rat's been pushed, uh, just small colonies of black rats, hmm. usually along the coast. And they think that, like you were saying, they live like in trees in Los Angeles. Yes. There are a lot of rats living in trees in Los Angeles and in ivy. There's a lot of ivy in oh. Los Angeles. And they live in both of those. And if you if you come to Los Angeles, you'll see a lot of palm trees with sheet metal, like a, a six-inch uh, piece of sheet metal wrapped around the tree. And that's to keep the rats from climbing up because oh. their claws scrape on the – they can't get purchase – on the sheet metal, so it keeps them from climbing up into the trees, apparently. Holy crap. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. so apparently they love they love climbing, and that's why they, they used to get on it. ship. Oh, <laughs> they love it. I'll see one. You know, it'll be a nice morning. You'll be outside having your coffee oh. every now and then. I'll see one scurrying across a, <laughs> uh, an electrical wire. Oh, God. Ooh. God, sons All right. of bitches. Uh, but the one we see most often now, like I said, is the brown rat, mm -hmm. the Norway rat. Mm -hmm. And it's larger than the black rat, and yes, it's it usually is. more aggressive, and it mm -hmm. will push out competitors. And this is a rat that, you know, would, would go on ships and it'd, it'd, like, get off on islands and then go in and destroy all the native, uh, you know, animals on the island or something like right. that. It was the brown right. rat. Well, I, um, I was in uh, the park across the street from my house not too long ago with my friend, and he brought peanuts to feed the squirrels. And yeah. we, he threw the peanuts down, and a squirrel came up and started to eat it, and he kept feeding the squirrel. And then all of a sudden, out of a bush <laughs> came a rat. And the rat scared the squirrel off and grabbed the peanut. And I was just like, that's L.A., baby. That's L.A. right there. I was just like, yep. <laughs> yeah, you just saw it, a living metaphor right there. <laughs> it's tough out here. It's tough yep. out here. Um, <laughs> so uh, the brown rat is usually about 16 inches long. Oh, I know it well. And, and weighs one pound. <laughs> and, yeah. But, you know, everybody always talks about, like, oh, those rats, were, they're as big as cats or something yeah, like that. no. And all of the experts say, like, it's very, I mean, you will not have a rat that big. But, yeah. But it's true. You just see it, and you're, in your mind, some kind of primal fear says that thing's as big as a cat. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I remember working in uh, a chicken restaurant in I remember <laughs> those Kansas days. City. I remember Kansas those City. days. Yeah. Yep. And there was like a, an old rat in there. You know, the restaurant had rats. Of course, every restaurant has rats. I think. Yeah. And uh, there was a rat in there called Old White Tail, legendary <laughs> Old White Tail. He had been there for years. People had seen him, <laughs> and they were like, "Old White Tail's as big as a cat." You know. <laughs> and and I remember one time I was, you know, you I was a dishwasher. I was only fourteen years old, and I'm washing under the dishwasher and the rats used to come and look out of the holes in the wall at <laughs> and they as you're like you. up. Oh. i know oh it was awful they just kind of poked their heads out like hey. maybe maybe old white tail was a possum you know well i saw possums I, oh you I, did I, yeah i oh, finally Jesus. saw him of like just this like you could hear his feet on the floor <laughs> old white tail and he was all white he was like he was, and I swear to God, at that time, I did think he was as big as a cat. But, yeah. uh, you know, the experts say Ooh. there's no way they can do that. Um, oh, my God. I think it's just because you're always, like, squatting down. Ooh. And you're always, like, vulnerable. You know, you're under a dishwasher. And here yep. comes a white tail, you know. Oh, God. I'm so sorry that happened to you. <laughs> he oh. was not not afraid of me at all. Like, he's like, never yeah, told I'm me white that tail, story. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. It came up like when I was researching this. I remember old white tail, legendary. Whitetail. Jesus, yeah. he was like Fang or something, you know, like an old, mm -hmm. like the legendary. I legendary. saw a coyote once walking down a street in L.A. at night with two cat legs sticking out of its mouth, oh, and it looked at me like, "What? What are you gonna do about it?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
What would you do at that point? I got, I got in my car and I drove away. He, he was absolutely right. <laughs> Two cat lanes. Yo. Oh. Yo. Um, so the, the brown rat arrived in your, it, again, the black rat came through first, Roman mm-hmm. time. Then it came through in the like 1100s with the Crusades mm-hmm. uh, when the people came back from the Crusade. The brown rat arrived later. Like, I was surprised at how late it arrived, like in the 1700s. In 1727, it came across the Volga River. It was in England in 1728. Norway, 1762. It wasn't, it didn't even come to Norway first, but people just called it the the Norwegian rat, you know. Blame it on the Norwegians. Yeah. Yeah. When are they going to do that? And then when did it come over here? Uh, It arrived in America in 1775. Which is oh, the start of the American Revolution. God, the English brought it over. <laughs> God, <laughs> it was, damn it. it. But now it's like on every single continent that humans have wow, it, ended up. That's how fast it's it's expanded. It, unbelievable. And they think that probably at some point when we go into space, oh, yeah. most likely some rat is going to find its way onto oh, yeah. a space and cock- and go up cockroaches, there. both yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, uh, one year life expectancy. I'm just throwing out facts about oh, the really? rat now. Huh. Yeah. I would have thought longer. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe when you have them as a pet or something, they live longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're omnivorous. They'll eat anything, yeah. <laughs> anything. Mm. And they must constantly chew to wear down their incisors. Right. So that's what. never stop uh, growing. Right. Right. Mm. Um, God. They're, they're figmophilic. Which means that they like touch. So, like, usually a rat will run along the side of a building the same oh. way that it. And, mm. and even if people remove the building, sometimes a rat will still make that same path or something because wow. they're, just, they're, just they're just so used to, used to Yeah. I can um, relate to that. I like touch. I'm omnophilic. <laughs> what is it? Omnophilic? Later on, we'll, we'll watch you as you try to leave this your room there and see you kind of like walking along the walls trying it to get It feels out. good. I'd like to know where I am. <laughs> uh, they're weary of new things in their environment, which makes it hard to trap them because you put a trap in there. They're like, and they're the smart fuck? enough to know. Yeah. yeah and they don't want to like... go in there and grab anything from uh-huh. it. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. And they also, they say that there's been studies done where it looks like they pass along information about the environment to their offspring. <laughs> yeah. They talk to them or you are genetically? Somehow, genetic, or communicate it somehow. To wow. Them. But that's, that's like, that's one of the elements of culture. Yes, it is. <laughs> to get on to your kids, you know. Wow. Wow. So... Uh, let's see. They, they also, this is frightening. They can collapse their skeletons and slip into like a, like little tiny holes yeah. in buildings or cracks yeah. or underneath cracks and doors. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I remember I had an exterminator and he's like, I bet he's getting in under that. And it was like a one inch space. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm. Wow. Um, in addition to the plague, they also, uh, they can pass on typhus. Uh, What's salmonella. That? What's typhus typhus? Is, um I think it, it's like uh, it gives you like a, f- a really bad fever as well. Mm. You can die from typhus. Okay. As well. Is that typhoid um, Mary? Is that the same thing? Typhus? That was typhus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And that one's actually passed by fleas as well. Fleas on the rats. Unbelievable. The other ones that they pass on like salmonella, listeria, listeria, leptospirosis. Mm. That's just by them getting into our food supplies mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just like pooping, feces. pooping and peeing. Yeah. Yeah. And, yep. and so that's how that one. Um, and then there's <clears> also like, like apparently <clears throat> 14,000 cases of rat bite fever. Every oh, no! <laughs> oh, my God. So it shouldn't have been cat scratch fever. It should have been rat bite fever. <laughs> right. Oh, it my doesn't God. Have the, it doesn't have the cachet of, like, cat scratch fever. No. But, uh, rat bite yeah. fever. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Wow. Rat bite yeah. fever. So what is that? So, again, it's, like, a uh, terrible fever that you get, uh, obviously. But it's it comes from... If they have it and they bite you and it gets infected, I guess. Like rabies. They just have it and they pass it on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ironically, though, they don't pass on rabies. What? Believe it or not. Yeah. No, no way. Yeah. That was one thing so they said. Of all of these, they don't pass on rabies. Interesting. There's one article I read, which I got to give it to them. That's okay. That's one. We'll put that as a check yeah. in the positive that, column. But right. Yeah. And then that, um, <clears throat> as far as plague goes in the U.S., most plague is passed by uh, prairie dogs. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. No. The bubonic no. plague is passed by prairie dogs? Most cases that we have now of the plague in the U.S. are west of the Rockies and passed by prairie dogs. You coming wow. in here. Yeah. How did the prairie dogs get <clears throat> the fleas? I, I have no idea, but they're The Spaniards, they're there. I bet. I bet it was the Spaniards. <laughs> I don't know. There's a... The uh, conquistadors. If you ever go to Lubbock, Texas, they have a prairie dog village there <laughs> with a small small uh, wall around it and you can go there early in the morning and watch the prairie dogs uh wake up but after mm. reading that article that they, no. they may be carrying plague there that's yeah. a, i will not be going back no. to see the prairie I, dogs I, i'll morning. just see that on the old youtube <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> uh so let's go uh so dna shows that the brown rat Separated from other rat species sometime between 2.9 million years ago and 900,000 years ago. Wow. So Old it's species. it's been, yeah. Original habitat, habitat was in China, Mongolia, and Siberia. Hmm. So again, they've made it from China, Siberia, Mongolia, came into... Which way do you think the, they came over the, over the mountains? Like, how do you, what, how did they get there? Well, they came through. Some reason, I guess it seems like they came through Europe first, and they yeah. came here through the uh, through the ships. Jesus. Um, some other information: archaeologists have found. And this is about mice, but it just kind of shows you how long mice or any rodent has been dealing with the U.S. They found mice in Homo erectus sites from seven hundred thousand years ago. Wow! Like the remains of mice. Wow. Yeah, and there's also evidence, archaeological evidence, of brown rats in like trash trash piles from 7000 to 9000 years ago in China. So again, Damn. they've they've been here with, with us. They just go wherever humans go. I mean, hum, you know, erectus. Mm. I mean, they've been around uh, yeah, they've been around as yeah. long as we have. Yeah. With us the whole time. They're like our version of the crocodile bird that, you know, eats <laughs> the thing. But they don't do us any good, do they? They, they don't do us anything. What do they do for that, us? That's kind of what I kept thinking about this whole thing. They really don't start doing anything to us until we start doing like medical research right. and using them in the 1800. But that's not until that, that was like the last 150 years. So yeah, we had probably 900,000 years of living with rats. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done anything. For us. Well, I'm yeah. sure we ate them, right? We probably hmm. ate them. Right. Right. That's what they look at in uh, the Hobbit cave in Indonesia. That's where the Homo floresiensis lived. It was like in the Homo floresiensis lived from like 700,000 to 50,000 years ago. And uh, they excavated a cave on that island where they lived. And they saw it was filled with rat bones. Oh. <laughs> filled with rat bones. <clears throat> and they don't know if the rats were scavenging or being eaten in there. Yeah, but it sure sounds like they were being eaten. Yeah. Just like uh, that's that, what... yeah. hot wings. That's, like the... <laughs> that's probably more the paleo diet. You know, <laughs> the paleo yeah. diet wasn't you were out eating like a mammoth or something. Paleo yeah. diet's like you were eating grub worms and Absolutely. Yeah. I mean yeah. a mammoth, I mean that would take like an army of us to kill a yeah. mammoth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh so let's just uh, culturally some different things about the, like the rat as part of the Chinese zodiac, which you, yes. you go. We, you I remember that. the year of the rat wasn't too long ago. I think we're really? in the year. What are we in now? The year of the bunny or something? I, I think don't we're know. in the year of the rabbit. I don't know what one, what it is. I'll have to uh, have to do some <laughs> research on that. Uh, again, in China, they found it like forty one hundred years ago. They found some some sites with some rat bones in there. Uh, Rats are worshipped in parts of India. There's uh, the Karni Mata Temple in Rajasthan, India, mm. where uh, it's just filled with rats. 
You can go oh. online and look at it. They they feed the rats there. Oh. Um, the uh, one of the legends is that it was an army that was es- escaping its enemies, and they it went into the temple seeking shelter. And the 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 god Karnimata, or a goddess Gar- Karnimata, saved them, but turned them all into rats, and that's who they are mm, still like there that. in the temple. Um, you mentioned it before, but in some parts of the world, rats are eaten. <laughs> which Still? I don't know. Still, yeah. Oh. There's like 89 rodent species around the world are are still eaten. Oh. And like in Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, parts of the Philippines, uh in the Vietnam, apparently parts of Vietnam, they'll they'll trap field rats and then they'll uh clean them and then the meat is smoked, fried, grilled or boiled. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. supposedly it tastes like rabbit. Which, really? Rabbit's yeah, you a put, little gamey for me. It's a little gamey. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't like I, the rabbit. It's been a while since I've had rabbit. I yeah. mean, growing up, we had a lot of rabbit. You know. Yeah. Um, From hunting or... Uh, yeah. Or yeah. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a lot of work, a rabbit. I yeah. Think. For not a lot of... Not hmm. a lot. Yeah. A lot of work for not much. Yeah. But, but I don't know. know you... If you yeah. gotta eat, you gotta eat. You're, if you're you know living off I mean? the land, you're living off the land. I hmm. get that. Um, All bets are off. I, it's something like you put it in terms of something I can understand. Like, I, oh, it tastes like squirrel or it tastes like rabbit. Mm-hmm. I, uh, all right, I could, I could uh, maybe, I maybe know. do it. Let's just become um, vegetarian. We all should just <laughs> become vegetarian. Uh, let's see. In Northeast India, the Adi tribe celebrates Unyang Arun which is the start of their New Year's Spring Festival uh, on March 7th, which is coming up if you want coming to... Coming up! Yeah. If you want to celebrate like they do, the Adi tribe does, uh, by eating rat meat, which includes a stew made of rat stomach, intestines, no. livers, no. testes, all boiled oh. together with legs oh. and tails. That's now that's, <laughs> uh, that's not right. That's like the menudo of rat menudo. Oh, uh, that, I love menudos. I do too. But <laughs> you put that in, again. You put it in the terms I love. So yeah, yeah. Suddenly I that's want it. well, menudo will it, you get you're hung over and boom, that stuff will take you right home. But 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 seriously, with all the rats, why do we have to use every piece of it like the buffalo? You know what I mean? <laughs> just just throw that stuff away. There's plenty more rats. You don't have to do something with the stomach. Yeah, or the, the testes. testes. That's yeah. just not no. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm judging that. But you spice it up with chili and ginger, and suddenly it's like okay, oh, all well, right. I could I could eat you with enough chili and ginger. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in Yaounde, Cameroon, they also uh, they eat cane rats that are like out hmm. in the sugar cane, I guess, or in the cane fields, hmm. and they say it tastes like uh, chicken, like slowly cooked pork pork shoulder. Ooh, like hardly I anybody love, said it. Yeah, hardly I anybody said it pork tastes shoulder. like chicken. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, All right. What's what's the weirdest thing <laughs> you've you've been to Africa? What or uh, oh, traveled around the world? Yes. What's the weirdest thing you've eaten? Do you think I ate a chicken <laughs> leg, a uh, chicken foot once? Yeah. I ate something. Oh God! What kind of blood was it? It was like this gelatin, but it was made out of blood, and that was in oh. China. I can't remember what kind of blood it was. Uh, I've eaten some weird stuff. I've eaten, oh, well, I've eaten uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Oh, did you? Which are bulls, bulls balls. <laughs> Bull, bulls balls or moles balls? I was thinking like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but bulls I've ball. eaten the bull ball. Yeah. Uh, I've, eaten, <laughs> I've eaten those. Uh, yeah. it was, it was deep fried though. And I, I, my, my, I stand by, um, my, my belief that you could eat anything that's deep fried and anything yeah. uh, you put, yeah. you deep fry a turd. It'll taste fine. <laughs> we'll have to, uh, <laughs> we'll have to try that on a future episode. We'll have a little, I think, what I've is it? It's deep fried. I've, what is it? <laughs> I've eaten insects, I've eaten some insects. Hmm. How about, what about you? What, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, I think it was in Chicago. It, the food's not related to Chicago, but it was in Chicago. And uh, a friend of ours, I can't remember her name right now. It slips slips on my mind. But she had been to Africa and she'd just come back from Africa. 
And before she left, she had picked up a bag of dried grub worms. Ooh. Like, and it was just in the, like a, a Ziploc bag. Like, it was like going to uh, Sprouts or something, you know, and you just kind of like, I guess you go to the market and you just get a handful of grub yeah. worms. And we were all playing cards and she said, like, who wants to eat a grub worm? And uh, nobody did. But I was like, when will I ever have a chance to eat a grub worm or not? Mm-hmm. And so I uh, she got it out. It was big. It, it was like it looked like a cigar stuffed with pencil shavings no <laughs> yeah, I, mean, well, I mean well i mean like a, a cigar stub i guess it was like about yes, three inches but long jesus oh my god yeah. that's much meatier than i oh i thought yeah, they were yeah. little yeah dry oh. dried the yeah. Same i bit into it and uh it, it did it tasted like a cigar with <laughs> it actually yeah. tasted like a cigar with pencil shavings it looked like it and tastes yeah. like it yeah. yeah it's a good source of protein uh, the bad thing is about that story. I was sober at that time. I'd already quit drinking. No, so there, there was like no excuse for it. And mm-hmm. uh, I couldn't forget it. It just stayed in my mouth for mm, you know, days. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to just uh, some history of the rat and human interaction. Usually people are upset about the... Uh, of you, you mentioned the diseases, but also rats cause a lot of damage, a lot of damage to grains, a lot of damage to uh, structures like wiring, mm-hmm. for example. They mm-hmm. chew the wiring and start buildings on fire. Yeah, and they chew uh, cables in cars, like they get into cars and, and damage cars. We had uh, in Santa Fe, uh, the deer mice caught our, our car on fire. God <laughs> damn they had them. gone in there and like... Chewed the wires and then made a nest out of all the, you know, dried twigs and stuff up on our uh, inside the car. And Mary went to go get her hair done or something, and it, the car caught on fire. So it was wow, awful. wow. Um, during the Middle Ages, rats were uh, associated with witches, mm. um, probably because uh, anytime there was a, a plague or a disease or something, people thought witches were doing it, and then they'd also see the the rat there. At the same time, so that's how they got mm-hmm. associated with it. Interesting, <clears throat> and uh, and then for some reason, well, it, it's rats became uh, kind of the the metaphor people would use for any unwanted types of people. Uh-huh. For example, it became like a symbol of like these migrations of people in, in that you didn't want or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So again, like going to like the Nazis would use a lot of rat metaphors for what they consider to be unwanted people, for example, like Jews or, you know, gypsies or something. Mm -hmm. And, and you still see, even now, I think when, when we, you see some, uh, you know, obviously from certain perspectives, but you see people talk about immigrants for example, mm-hmm. and they use the same sort of metaphor. They're using rat, the rat metaphor, like, oh, it's just mm-hmm. waves of them and they're right. destroying everything. A scourge. So, uh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's kind of this idea of a, a collective, uh, you know, the reproduction and the collective you know, destruction that they, you know, and so it's rats are very powerful. It's a very powerful symbol for us, I think, subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was also reading an article where they were talking about like trying people trying to get rid of pigeons, for example. And, you know, so if pigeons are a problem as well in certain parts of the country and cities. Yep. And, uh, and what they always try to do to get people against pigeons is they, you know, they're rats with wings. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know what I That's mean? True. So it's again, like the rat is like our benchmark. Yes. For how loathsome a creature can be, you know? It, yeah. It's so deeply ingrained into our, our psychic, you know, li- lizard brain that the, this is right. the thing that. Hmm steals my food and runs around on me and at night you can't catch it must be yeah i get that yeah vampires vampires can turn into rats yeah remember in uh uh, francis ford coppola's dracula remember there's that scene where dracula turns into a bunch of rats in the closet or something like that yes oh Oh. yeah so there's something subconscious for that for us i think um and then you mentioned just now about like, yeah, they're taking our food. I think maybe that's like the 
the the kind of historic or prehistoric fear that we have mm-hmm. is that they're taking our food. And um, I read uh, in 1858, there was a guy named uh, James Rodwell wrote a book about the rat and it, he was English and he wrote about it. And he said that rats were, quote, eating into the very foundation of British prosperity. So in other <sighs> words, he again, <laughs> It's like he hated rats too, wow, which again, I completely were... agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you had, you know, like during the middle ages, you had the Pied Piper of Hamlin. Remember? I, thought, I wondered idea. when you would get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever, were you ever in a production of that? I think they made never. that like children. Yeah. No, yeah. never was in it. But I, it's, it's such a crazy story of this guy coming in and leading them all out. And he kind of tricks yeah. them, doesn't he? He's, he's kind of a trickster in some of the Well, they don't want to, the they story. try to like, uh, they try to not pay him. And so he's oh, like, that's okay, right. and I'm going to come get all the all kids. And, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. He takes the kids. Yeah, he, oh. I think doesn't he like he he plays yeah. the flute and gets all the kids to leave or something. Yeah, he takes all the kids out. So, um, in the 16th century in Autun, France, uh, rats were accused and actually prosecuted for eating <laughs> for eating up the barley crop, and uh, and they were threatened with excommunication for for, for what they were doing. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. And there was a guy by the name of Bartholomew Chassonet was he was he was a lawyer was hired to defend the rats. So he's like a public <laughs> defense attorney for the rats. Holy why why I don't understand. It's just like was it just to show people that they were doing something about it? Right. Because they exactly. had no no real way to deal with the problem. Right. And there's a history of humans prosecuting animals for doing things <laughs> like That's go amazing. in and read through history like we're prosecuting a pig for getting out of its pen and eating all of our you know food or something like that there's a whole <laughs> history of that but Chassonet actually his he was successful his defense was first of all there's rats all over the place because so you can't really know which rat was responsible for eating up the food right and secondly he said it's too far because the rats were served with a summons to appear, appear at the trial. And he was like, they're so far away, it would take them forever. And they're afraid of being eaten by cats. So you can't <laughs> prosecute them uh, because they have a right of appeal for not being able to oh safely come. Yeah. And he won. He won that. And then, like, I read where, you know, like 20 years later, he tried that same defense on a human. And they were like, the judge was like, oh, no. <laughs> He's, he's guilty. Wait, so they won? The rats won the case? They won the case, yeah. Because he said they couldn't actually... It, they were too afraid to show mm. up to uh, give their side of the case. Oh my god. We are ridiculous. <laughs> beings are just It's just insanity on top of insanity. Yeah. Yeah. There's other things in the uh, instances in the Middle Ages where people would write up notices to the rats... Saying, you know, like, rat, please get out of my house. And then you stuff it into a hole, you know, where the rats were. And uh, the idea was that the rat was supposed to read that and get the idea to move on. So is this uh, like like magic kind of stuff, like witchcraft? Or is this like they literally thought the rat would unwrap it and read it? And Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's witchcraft because they said that what they would do is they would put grease on the little piece of paper so that the, that would attract the rat to come over and read it. Oh my God. <laughs> so they were feeding the rat to get him to read yeah. the note to not eat yeah. their food. Yeah. Man. Just like that, please, you know, like but just I, lay I, it on I the guess, line. Just talk to him. I understand all of this because in the end, it's like, there's nothing we we can't, we will never eradicate them. You right. know, I, and, and so it's like, well, how do we deal with something like that? You know, give how, us a how, sense of that we're doing something. That's uh-huh, what you're saying. Something we're powerless. So how do we how do we feel feel better about right. that? Um, in Ireland, in the Elizabethan age, there was supposed to be that the idea was that poets could rhyme a rat to death, meaning <laughs> <laughs> you would have a rhyming. You would like a just give them a good poem, and that would uh, cause Ugh. them to die. You gotta love the Irish. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. Um, and and there was also they say if you pounded on a drum, a rhythmically on a drum, and you gave them a poem, that would drive the rats out. Wow. And 
and and I kind of you know having lived in Venice uh, with the drum circle every weekend, I kind of understand. <laughs> when you're driving you're... everything. Out. <laughs> Nobody wants a drum circle except the people in the drum circle. Right. When you're in it, it's great. But when you're yeah. outside, just like, hey, I got to go to work tomorrow, and you just yeah. hear that rhythmic. <laughs> So I kind of understand how that works. I don't think it's the rhyming so much. Um, but there, apparently it was, but most of the references I could find to people actually, you know, rhyming rats to death were people that weren't Irish. So I don't know if this was a true thing or if this was just something that was, you know, oh, you, well, you know the Irish. Because, um, for example, Shakespeare and As You Like It, there's a, a, a line where Rosalind is thinking about uh, Orlando. Orlando's left a poem for her, and she loves the poem. And she says, I was never so berhymed since Pythagoras' time. That I was an Irish rat, which I can hardly remember. So she, that's what she's oh, referring wow. to, is that it was... Uh, the rhyming this, of the rats, the rhyming the right. rats away. That's right. fantastic. And uh, as ben you Johnson, like it, not, uh, yeah, hmm. not not the most popular play. You know, you don't really? see that one as you like. I mean, you know, it's up there. I guess. Were you ever in it? Did you ever Never. do any Shakespeare? When... I uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I've done some Shakespeare. God, it sucks. Oh, <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. I'm just not talented enough. It's just <clears throat> oh my god, those people, those you... Shakespearean actors are the real deal, man. Yeah, to make sense out of a... that. Did you have a lot? Of, did you have to learn? Like, yes. Yeah. Like, oh. And it, it, in some case, you know, you get to understand it and you use the, you know, there's there's dictionaries and stuff and you find the meaning in it and that's how you remember it. But still. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And everybody knows it. So if you right. screw it up, everybody knows. There are people out there who know every goddamn line. I always love when you hear somebody somebody from England does it, and it sounds like an actual somebody speaking doing yeah, it. Yeah, always that's amazing. I love it, but it, yeah. it's like it always seems like in in not all the time, but in America a lot, you'll hear somebody doing a Shakespearean part, and they're, they're just reading it. It doesn't right. sound natural, you know. Nobody's no. talking; it's just no. reading it like it was a poem or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's so true. Uh, <laughs> Another thing, in Robinson Crusoe is actually based on a real guy named Alexander Selkirk, who was uh, he was left on an island by his his crew. <laughs> he was marooned back in the uh, I think it was in the 1600s or 1700s. And Selkirk in his journal talks about like the island that they left him on was filled with rats. And he would always, they would come and like nibble at his toes and his oh, clothes and everything. No. Yeah. Yeah. He oh. said it was all. And uh, he was there for like four years of like oh, rat just harassing him. That, you're never, and, you're not going to come back the same. That's it. <laughs> I know. Oh. He just never, never slept quite the same after that. Oh, God. Uh, and Daniel Defoe, when he wrote Robinson Crusoe, left out the rats. There's no rats on there. Yeah, and you, they you said it was just so. Yeah, yeah, it was so awful that you could never get past that. You know. Oh God. Um, in the 1850s, there was a rat catcher in uh, London named Jack Black. Hey, who, I know, I, I like know the actor. <clears throat> and he wore an oilskin belt with figures of rats on it. He was supposed to be the best rat catcher in London. Uh. And he used to, he would catch them to kill them, get rid of them for people. Or he would, the ones that kind of had nice color, for example, the ones that kind of fancy rats, he would keep and breed them. So they think most, a lot of our fancy rats that we have now, including white rats used in, uh, in, in like medical research, they think kind of go back to Jack Black. Oh my catcher. God. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, God, we should do a movie about Jack Black and get Jack Black to play Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, just, just rats. Hey, How nobody's you seen rats? that. None of our listeners. Come on. <laughs> I thought it first. Uh, and the other thing he did was he would catch them for the rat pits in the taverns. Ooh. And that's where they would have rat pit. You would throw a bunch of rats in a pit with a with a terrier, like a dog. Oh boy! And people would bet to see how many rats that the dog could kill in a certain amount of time. Jesus! Just 
Yeah. <sighs> Those are our report. If, if you ever, for anybody that's nostalgic for what it was like in the 1800s. Yeah. Uh, I recommend reading Henry Mayhew's book. It's, it's like the, the poor of London or something. And it's just Ugh. awful. It just, just tells awful. you how awful life was in, in the old days. Well, I mean, in, even out here in the Wild West, the, there was a reason everybody was drunk. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah. It was horrid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he talks about, uh, just real quick, it, like just the jobs. He goes around. He just went around for in 1850 and talked to people in, in London and just the jobs that people had to do to stay alive. Like there were people that would just go down in the sewers and your job was just, uh, you would just kind of go through all the, all the crap and, and just see if anybody had dropped some money in there or something. Oh know? my God. Your job. <laughs> oh, that your job. that's kind of what it's like to be uh, in the entertainment industry. <laughs> it's not that far. <laughs> I always love how you bring it home. You bring it home. <laughs> Just make it understandable. Something we can believe in. Something we can identify with. Um, so then just kind of uh, quickly to sum up on a few things. In 1986, uh, a couple of anthropologists and psychologists uh, took a look at like the rat problems in America and just how people deal with them. And what was kind of funny about that study was um, people always think that rats are there in their neighborhood due to somebody else's mm-hmm. <laughs> behavior. Mm-hmm. So it's always, you always say, well, that my neighbor never, never throws away their trash or something. Like that. <laughs> and so it's always, they found that it was always somebody else that was responsible for the rat problem. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. But, but then again, like we were talking about in the Pacific Palisades, it really was due to somebody else. Oh so you my don't know. God. Well, there, there's this, I mean, there's a sort of parallel story with the, there's a new mosquito breed that's kind of infiltrated Los Angeles. One of the things yeah. about Los Angeles was, is that there were no bugs. That was one of the nice things about LA yeah. Yeah. and no mosquitoes, but now a little tiny black, a breed of, of, of mosquitoes that are difficult to kill and bite, you bite you like six times. Uh, supposedly has come over. I mean, it's here, but but th- that it's come over from Asia, you know, and that it's always oh, from Asia, right. a boat from Asia, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Have you seen them? Have you? Do they? Oh yeah, do it's they ruined fight? L.A. It's it's just horrid. It's 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 over. It's over. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Have to put screens on your windows now. Yeah, right? there's right. screens, and everybody has to spray, and you know, they just have to live like everybody else. Yeah, but it's it's nice year round, so they're here year round, except for a few months in the winter. Wow. Um, so then another person who had done some studies on uh, on rats and and animals, she she talked about her name's Harriet Ritvo, and what her point was is you know culturally we always think that humans are in charge of everything, like in the book of Genesis, the humans were supposed to have been given dominion over the animals. And and then she says we we kind of we have this fear of the the beast whether it be the beast within us or the beast without, but mm-hmm. but when it comes to rats, uh, we and this is I don't think she she didn't talk she talked about Genesis and everything but but I think when it comes to rats it's like I think we feel subconsciously we don't have dominion over these right these animals right we can't you know what I mean? stop them there's too many <clears throat> right right. And they've, they come into like our urban environment. Like we push the large animals like bears or right. 22 we didn't push out, but, right. but we've, we've pushed out the large animals to where, yeah, we hardly ever see them in our home, but like the rats still can get in. You're in New York in a, a high rise and a, a rat can still get up there through your toilet and, and get into your apartment. Yeah. I mean, they have dominion over us is the thing we don't want to. Admit. Yeah. yeah. It's awful. It's awful. Um, so just kind of summing up here, uh, I'm going to close with, with a little poetry. If oh, that's all right. We've excellent. been talking about the poetry. Oh, we're stepping things up a notch <laughs> on this show. That's fantastic. Is this, this something is, uh, you've written? No, no. This is oh. uh, by Robert Burns, the Scottish mm. poet. Mm-hmm. And it's it's to a mouse. That's the name of the poem. But but I always, as I read it, I was like, this could be how, how I feel about 
rats as well. Yes, and this is this is the the famous. And you have poem. a lot of uh, you're a Scot- a lot of Scottish blood in your in your veins, so this is perfect. It appealed to me down in yes. the DNA. Yes, uh, again, this is him to a mouse by Robert Burns. Okay, um, actually, I I won't read it in the Scottish dialect. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I can. There's a plug in here that I can do after and post. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, yeah, you can go online and see, uh, you can hear Scott, people from Scotland read it. I'm not going to do it, namely because we've already done a show about people doing accents. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty horrible. <laughs> okay, so here we go. To a mouse, or in this case, to a, a rat. rat. Mm-hmm. Sleek, tiny, timorous, cowering beast. Why is such panic in your breast? Why dash away so quick, so rash, in a frenzied flash, when I would be loath to run after you with a murderous plow staff? So (laughs) he's out working in this field. I'm not done with it, but he's out working in this field. He he digs up some dirt and he sees a a mouse just take off. And he's like, why are you so afraid of me? Okay. So the next thing he says is, I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union. And justifies that bad opinion, which makes you startle when I'm your poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal. Mm. So again, he's like, hey, I'm sorry we've kind of invaded your space, mm-hmm. but I'm right there with you, brother. You know what I mean? He's like, hey, right. we're both mortals. We're both. So I kind of get that, too, with, with, with like with a rat. Like, I understand, like, hey, you're just he's doing just your rat to thing. Live. Yeah. Yeah. We're both there, you know. Um, and then he says, there's a lot more stances, but I, I, I was, I, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> this is the one. My mouse friend, you are not alone. Improving foresight may be vain. The best laid plans of mice and men. This is where that line Ooh, comes from. Wow. From this poem. So now if anybody ever says it, like what poem does it? Best laid plans of mice and men. It's from To a Mouse by Robert Burns. Uh, go off to Rye and leave us only grief and pain for promised joy. Mm-hmm. So again, it's he's kind of this idea of like he understands the mouse. You know what I mean? He understands why the why mouse is do, afraid. Yeah. Why can't we all live in concert? Why can't we all just get along? Right. Exactly. And well, we can't. Rats must die. <laughs> Rats yeah. must die. Yeah, I mean, in conclusion, I would say I would love to have the whole ratatouille experience, you know, have a rat no. sit under my hats and pull my hair and teach me how to make gourmet meals, but oh. but I can't do it. I can't no. do it. No. I you know. totally freak out and have to kill that thing in mediamente. Yeah. Oh. I I've tried to, you know, I've, I've tried to be the bigger person after, especially after reading so much about them. I thought this would change my feeling about rats, mm-hmm. um, but it didn't. No, it didn't. I'm right back, I'm right back where I started. I had so. a rat in my house that we I couldn't catch. Very smart rat. I kept. We tried different traps. We, he just he couldn't get him. And I noticed my wife freaked out and said that he went up this hole and I found out oh my god he's going up this weird hole and so I was like I know how I'll get him I'll put sticky stuff down you know the stick traps and I got him but that is the worst oh yeah oh my god then you have to take it out and it's still alive and and, oh my god it was the worst experience yeah it was the worst yeah it was he was still alive. Yeah, he was still alive. There, still right? alive, and now Whoa. he's all glued to that thing. And I'm like, should I kill hmm. him? But I can't. I don't know. I put him in a yeah. plastic grocery bag and tied it real tight, hoping he would suffocate. Oh, That's all I could but think there was of. probably an, enough air in there. He could live for weeks. No, oh, with God, little I feel lungs. So or terrible way. about it. I feel <laughs> terrible. Yeah, in in her book, uh, Fuzz, Mary Roach at the very end talks about how she's trying to come to terms with kind of a more accommodating uh you know role with rodents or like our interaction with rodents being more accommodating to where you don't you you don't kill them you know you'll never get rid of like you mentioned you'll never get rid of these things 
And so she talks about like, well, you know, if we could come to more accommodation with them and kind of living in peace, so to speak, maybe that would be a good way that we could interact with other humans as well. I completely get that. But no. I'm nope. not there yet. No. It's never. me. Never. Never. Yeah. <laughs> so they must die. All of them. Yeah. So I think in conclusion, I have to say to the rats, you know, look, I understand this relationship, but it's me. Okay. It's not you. Yeah. But, but we're going to kill you. You're dead. You're done. <laughs> yeah. We it's just, me, just not best. you. <laughs> oh, the, thank you so much. This was this was really uh, uh, wonderful. Wonderful. I've, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about rats. Yeah. It's fascinating. Uh, you can go online. You can Google ratting in England with terriers, and you can see Jack Black. People are still out there. People are still yeah. out there ratting right now. You can wow. see the actual current footage of people ratting, kind of give you an idea of what it was like to be in the rat pits uh, back in the 1800s. So. All right, John. Well, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. This is human number two, John Lear. And this is human number one, John McRae. And thank you again for, for joining us. And we will see you along the, the, the journey to self-discovery. Mm -hmm. But we're so. going to keep, we're going to touch the walls as we go, <laughs> as we go along the way. <laughs> All right, John. Talk Bye. to you later.